Hello, and welcome to another Divorce Discussions Conversation. And I am really happy to introduce Santu Eve Carter. She is the founder of Grief Support Services Global, and she has over 25 years experience as a psychotherapist specializing in trauma and grief. She's also a hospice chaplain and motivational speaker. And currently, Santu works with therapists, coaches, and directly with families to help them manage um, grief situations through divorce, death, and other kinds of losses in life. So, Santu, welcome. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me, Marty. And so I always like to start out this question because, um, you know, you and I are both in areas of work where a lot of people don't want to (laughs) go. So Mm -hmm. what what brought you to this area and why is this kind of your passion and interest? Yeah, so um, it's an unusual route. Um, So I'm a, a second generation genocide survivor and that transgenerational trauma over the years has really fragmented my family. And ironically, one of the things I remember my father saying was family needs to stick together. And that's a kind of mantra that most people live with, right? Until they find themselves in a situation where the family's breaking apart. And so I really felt called to study um, systemic family therapy and to really help families find ways um, to communicate better, to have harmony, um, to work through traumas that might be affecting a spouse that they hadn't worked through before and it's affecting things badly. So I I hold a strong sense of hope for people um, either before the divorce or even after the divorce. Like sometimes divorce is necessary if there's physical abuse, for example, or you know other kinds of abuse and uh, it's not being worked through. I mean, it can be worked through, but if it, if it you know, if both people aren't willing to work through it, right. then sometimes it's necessary. And so I, I help rebuild people to be able to live fully again and to love again. Oh, I love that. That is such a positive message. And so I've run into, just full disclosure, because the internet is a small place, we seem to be running into each other at a lot of different events. And I always think to myself, if that is happening, there is a reason for that. And so mm. um, I, I, I totally understand your, your, your passion around this. What do you think people need to understand about grief that they don't get now? Do you mean grief from divorce in particular? Grief, or, any, let's or, go any kind of grief. Because I, I really think, uh, as a person who's been divorced and has lost a husband and both of their parents and almost all of their family relatives, um, right. you know, I don't necessarily see that there's a huge, dis- I don't delineate mm-hmm. one grief from a, So let's just say loss. Mm-hmm. Let's maybe say loss. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of misconceptions about loss out there. What mm-hmm. do you think are some of the big ones that, really negatively impact how people are handling this? Yeah, well, I think one of the things I want to mention is the sense of recovery time. Um, I I don't like the word recovery, um, but if we're thinking about it as a bounce back time, what different people use different terms, right? So the sense of time frame about a loss um, varies from person to person, but what I don't think society really understands is how long it can take to um, work through the loss. And that's because no one really understands the the type of relationship that you or someone would have had with the person that they've lost. We'll say lost to mean all types of loss. Right, and, right. You know. um, so... And if it's a conflictual relationship, if things didn't get worked out or resolved or things weren't forgiven before someone died or, or you know, they, lo- they lost them, um, it can actually complicate grief even more and make it even more difficult. And so for someone to say, aren't you over it yet, is completely insensitive because they don't know what's going on inside the person and all that they have to work through in order to find a sense of peace about, you know, the, their loss. Yeah, so, I think that's a really good point. And I see that all the time, especially, um, you know, and I'm going to talk about divorce now, but, you know, people say, well, you wanted the divorce, you filed for it. So now why is it mm-hmm. still bothering you a year later? Like, this is what mm-hmm. you wanted, isn't it? And they're almost like combative when they say that to people. 
Yes, yes, yes. And in fact, I've got a resource for your audience that talks about that specifically. So it talks about um, all the nuanced emotions that someone might feel, even if they wanted it. And I think it's like on page one or two, I address that right at the top, right at the beginning, that even if you wanted it, there's still a sense of failure sure. that you have. And that's big. Um, there's there's all sorts of reasons that, um, that, that, that people might still be grieving. So if someone had come to rely on the other person for practical reasons and they lose that, that support, that extra support, you know, practical support in the home, that's big yeah. because sometimes spouses have to completely change their job or change their lifestyle, change homes. There's a lot of loss that comes with divorce yeah. and people may not kind of think of all the, all the layers of loss that one has to go through with a divorce. Yeah. Oh, I so appreciate you saying that because I, I always tell people it's like a divorce is like dropping a pebble in a, in a, in a pond, you know, it's still, but then that divorce happens, mm. but the ripples keep going like way out to the way out to the, the you know, the shoreline. And there's yeah, all those yeah. little things like friends that all of a sudden stop talking yeah. to you. And yeah. maybe like I'm right now I live in Texas and it's there, you know, there's, it's, it's, it's a churchy community. And so sometimes mm. the church doesn't acknowledge divorce or, or frowns on divorce. And then yes. people feel yes. like they can't even go to the church that was their safe place. So all yeah. of these kind of things can, and I'm not saying that about the South. I mean, that can happen anywhere, but I yes. noticed it more when I moved here. Um, mm. So, so there's a lot, and thank you for that resource. It sounds fantastic. And I'll make sure all of that information gets put in the notes under the, under this YouTube video so people can reach out to you. W mm. What are some of the other things that you think are struggles, whether it's loss of a loss of a spouse through, or a, a person in your family through death, or whether it's a divorce, what are some of the other issues that maybe as an expert, you're aware of that, like the rest of us maybe aren't as aware of, uh, as it pertains to grief? Mm. Well, there's something significant um, that I learned in my training as a family therapist that most people don't know. And I mentioned this in my resource as well, because I think it's so important for people to realize this. And it's a bit of a shocker. Um, but most people think that once the divorce is finalized, that's the end of the conflict and things will go back to peace and there'll be harmony. And what people don't realize is that actually um, people, well, family therapists have been tracking and re researching and tracking, right? And it typically takes five years for that conflict after the divorce is finalized to settle down yeah and so I, I want to be able to say that to people so that they hold on to that hope and know that there is a light at the end of the tunnel because there can be huge conflicts that happen um huge ruptures that can happen after the divorce especially if there's children involved and you have to negotiate when they go to the other spouse for Christmas and holidays and pick up times and what is what are they eating at the other person's home and yeah. you know there's huge rows that can continue to happen oh, and new yeah. ones as well. Yeah. yeah. And that's, that's one of, you know, that's that key co-parenting thing that, you know, so, you know, the, the, the co-parenting plans I got to say are getting better because I mediate a lot of those co-parenting plans, but they're still, both people have to commit to it. And if one person wants to be an ass, they're going to be an ass. Like there's nothing you can do. You can't stop it. So, so I appreciate that you talk about all of that stuff. What about, so let's talk a moment because a lot of people like myself are dealing, you know, we've had multiple kinds of grief in our life. Um, what about the loss of a parent uh, specifically? Because a lot, you know, again, um, I'm reaching the age where most of my friends, if they haven't lost their parents, they're dealing with parents that are in, in hospice or that are in long-term care or that have Alzheimer's or dementia or, you know, any number of, chronic illnesses with the aged. So what, what's that kind of grief? How's that different maybe, or, or what's special or unique about that kind of grief that people should be aware of? Yeah. So I think um, with that kind of grief, that kind of what I would call anticipatory grief, you know, you're expecting it to happen, but you don't know when, and you're anticipating at some point um, in the not too distant future, um, it, it might happen. People tend to have a strong sense of hope and a strong sense of, well, it's not going to happen today. It's not going to happen next week. And they keep hoping that it'll just 
be one more day or one more week or one more month. And, and I remember um, when I was at my father's side, when he was dying of cancer, I would be thinking just one more day, just one more day. And that real strong sense that keeps you going, I think is slightly different than uh, grief from a loss of relationship, like divorce and uh, post-death grief. So I think that's, that's quite unique. Yeah. Um, hmm. And, and it's, and it, you know, I've got another resource um, called Stages of Hope. And it's for people with a terminal illness and how um, family members can support uh, the person that's dying and to give themselves a bit of hope as well. And what, you know, what can help? Um, because there, there's different ways of kind of talking with someone uh, who's dying. I mean, that that's a whole other kettle of fish, um, you know, which I can elaborate on another time. I'll say a little bit now. Um, uh, there's something about helping the dying person. If they have, well, uh, if they have a, a sense of spirituality, but even if they don't, sometimes they start exploring their spirituality as they get clean you know, in the last months of them living. And so that's one of the ways that family members or friends can support someone is just exploring with them. What are you thinking is going to happen? Do you have any fears of what might happen to your body or to your soul once your body is, you know, left behind? Right. So it's an incredibly spiritual experience for those who are dying. And it's a real privilege and an honor to be a part of that. If you're willing to be open, listening to what they have to say, if you're willing to communicate and be with them in that process, it's, right. it's, such a rewarding experience and i think you know when you say that i, I that that really you know kind of tugs at my heartstrings because my husband was at home for eight, seven years i was his caregiver before he passed away but mm. the you know there is there's also i don't know how to put we, we like to see death and that that caring but there's also like a really difficult side if the person who is um you know, passing is combative, is um, angry, is hostile, is frightened or upset or whatever's going on for them. That can be a, a bit of a different experience. And I'm guessing the grief after that for the family members is very different, right? Mm, yes, indeed. And it sounds like what you're describing is someone with dementia, because that is one of the, the traits that they can exhibit when someone does have dementia. And it can be quite challenging. Um, before not just because of their behavior but also because you have a real sense of you've lost the person you used to know because they're you used to have a hormone a generally harmonious relationship with them and now it's fraught with friction on a yeah. daily basis yeah so yeah. you've you you know in that sense you've lost who they were and i think the biggest tip i can give your audience members to to really take on board is um, to hold on to and bring up the happy memories. I know that can be hard. There's work to do to, to process and work through those feelings of the trauma that you will have experienced towards the end of life. But if you work through the trauma, you can then start working on the grief and then those positive memories will naturally start to bubble up in time. Yeah. Oh, I, that, you know what? That's such a positive message too. You're such a, it, it's a tough topic, but you keep it so optimistic and positive about it. And so mm. I know we've covered both kinds of grief. And, and I do mm. think that is important because I think a lot of people, especially, you know, my age and up women going through the gray divorce, but you know, now, now they're saying pretty much anything over 50 is a gray divorce. And I'm thinking, gosh, that seems really young, but you know, there, so there's a lot of people that are dealing that sandwich generation. They're dealing with their own mm. divorces. They're dealing with, you know, caring for parents or, or maybe mm. losing parents at this point in time. So there's a, there can be a lot of grief. What about, and we've just got a couple of minutes. So this is going to be a, a big question with a short answer. So I totally understand I'm putting you on the spot. What about helping your kids mm -hmm. express grief? And let's talk about grief around the divorce because grief around loss of a grandparent or something is huge. So let's, maybe let's just focus on the divorce. Like how could we, how could we as parents help our kids with that? Yeah, so certainly the children will feel the loss of their parents through a divorce. Um, there's, it, it really does depend on the type of child that you have, their personality, and, and how they kind of express their grief. Um, so they might want to express it through emotions. They might withdraw. Um, other, other children 
might express it through anger. Um, so, so you, and anger and sadness are the flip sides of the same coin. So the best suggestion I would give is to really just talk with them and ask them what's going to help you to feel better about this. So really open up that communication process and check in with them regularly because um, there could be some risks that children take that could be harmful to them because they don't feel well supported by their parents or they're, they're not checking in. And, and so they could, they could take some risks that aren't so helpful to, to, you know, and I'll, I'll, I'll be up front and say self-harming like self-cutting is one of the ways to, re they think is a, an effective way to relieve their pain because sure. they feel isolated and alone and no one's supporting them. So parents do please reach out and talk to your children. And now, you know, with the readily available um, various substances, alcohol, drugs, prescription medications, I mean, there's all kinds of things. So yes, I, I'm, thank you for bringing that up. And one of the things I do believe is speaking honestly about these things. So don't want people getting paranoid, but be aware. So Santa, yeah. thank you so and, much. And down Again, download the resource because I talk about that in my uh, resource for divorced families yeah, as well. That's what I was just going to say. So I'm going to encourage everybody, um, make sure you check in the, in the, in the YouTube notes, uh, grab that resource, take a look at it. And uh, Santu, if people want to reach out and find out how to work with you, what is the best way to do that? So um, grief support.co slash contact. Great. Thank you so much. And thank you for sharing all your wisdom and, you know, kind of making this a really approachable subject, something that a lot of people feel very uncomfortable about. So thank you so much for this, Santu. Oh, you're very welcome. Thank you, Marty. It's been a pleasure talking with you. You too.